Hey guys, I'm going to show you guys how to shell and hollow out a model a little more accurately than uh, ZBrush's um, create shell function. So the first thing I'm going to do with this model, it's made up of 26 different subtools. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, merge visible. And that's going to give us a new subtool. We lost our subdivisions because they were all dynamically subdivided. I'm going to select this logo, hit Control Shift A, go under um, Subtool, Split, Split Hidden, just separate those two. And I'm going to take the main model and subdivide it a few times. 1.6 million polys, it's pretty good. And now I'm going to dynamesh it. I'm going to delete these subdivision levels. We don't need them. I'm going to turn off blur and project. Dynamesh at about 900 resolution. That'll be pretty good. Hit dynamesh. And let's see what happens. And we can see here the model kind of exploded. There's a lot of artifacts going on. The reason it did that is because our Dynamesh it's a little high and we've got a, all those subtools. just doesn't really know how to handle it. I'm sure I'm going to hit Control Z. If we went up to 500 resolution, it'd probably Dynamesh just fine. But then we'd be, we're at 1.5 million polys. And it's not the greatest you know, surface. I want to try to get a little higher than 1.5 million polys. So what I do is separate this model into a couple pieces. So let's grab that, hit Control Shift A, split hidden. We're going to separate into three different parts. Grab that, Control Shift A, split hidden. So now we got our three parts. And Let's dynamesh these separately. So turn off blur, 900 resolution there, and dynamesh. All right, and it looks fine. No artifacting or exploding geometry. Grab this and do the same thing. Turn off solo here. Turn off blur, 900 resolution, dynamesh. And that looks fine. Take the last piece, turn off blur, 900, Dynamesh. And it's looking good. So now we're going to merge all these subtools together. So we're going to merge down, merge down again, and Dynamesh. Now you can see we're at 4.8 million polygons and it looks way better than the model did at 1.5 million polygons. Alright, so now that we got our Dynamesh model, um, let's turn off symmetry. Oh, we don't have symmetry on. Now let's cut it in half, take a look inside. Let's go to uh, display properties, turn on double. And what we're looking for are artifacts or floating geometry inside of the model. And usually I have a few when I make a model out of a, you know, 26 different subtools. So here we've got a little piece floating. Let me select that a little better. All right, I'm going to turn on symmetry and select that. And we want to delete this. And the reason this happened was because uh, this geometry in the front here wasn't intersecting far enough with the geometry behind it. And it created this little pocket. Alright, so select that. And we're just going to invert it and delete hidden. 
and that's under geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And we're going to redynamesh. That closes it, up, closes it up right up. If we look at it again, it's gone. All right. Now we want to duplicate this subtool and we're going to dynamesh it down and turn the resolution. Let's go to 300. Uh, let's uh, shift click on the surface real quick. Right, I'm going to turn off the other subtools. All right. So now that we got that, we are going to Z remesher it. I'm just going to leave it at the default settings and see what we get. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Got a decent amount of polygons there. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to slice off the bottom here select rec and we're going to delete that and now we want to get our Z modeler brush B Z M we're going to select a polygon hit space and we don't want Q and mesh we want extrude and we're going to do all polygons and we're going to extrude it by point one one, and the reason I do point one one is because my scale in ZBrush is in uh, centimeters. So point one one would be one point one millimeters, and that's the thickness I'm after. And we can check that by grabbing our move tool or any of the transpose tools, and just dragging that and we're at 1.1 units or 0.11 units which is 1.1 millimeters and that's exactly what I want alright we can check our surface in here and it looks looks pretty good there's no geometry just jutting out of nowhere um, but if your geometry is not looking so great you can go to deformation and polish by features or polish by groups and just just do one or not very much and that cleans it up a little bit all right so don't worry about all this geometry sticking out here it's not a big deal all right now we're going to dynamesh this so we're going to go to geometry dynamesh and we're going to turn it up a little bit. Let's go to 500 and hit Dynamesh. And we'll retain all these polygroups, hopefully. Yep, all right. All right, 1.8 million polys. Pretty good. So now it's Control Shift, click on the inside here, and let's delete hidden. So now we got all these floating guys that we got to get rid of. And we can either hit Auto Groups or something a little faster if, we, if I just select a little bit from the main body and hit control shift A it'll just select that one piece of connecting geometry and get rid of all these little floaters So now we want to delete those delete hidden and let's redynamesh this that'll close up the bottom alright now let's bring back our main subtool Turn on transparency. And I'm going to cut this bottom off here. So let's get the slice curve brush. I'm going to hit Control W to make it all one polygroup. And get our move tool transpose line. I just want to make sure it's at least 1.1 uh, millimeters thick here. That's 1.5 where the transpose line is, so I'm going to cut it right about there. So control Shift, and I'm going to slice it right there. And now we're going to grab our select rectangle 
and select that and delete hidden and redynamesh. All right. Now, now we've got the inside that we can boolean out of the main subtool. All right. Now I'm going to append a cylinder. And this is just to make a hole in the bottom. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. And let's move that down. And then merge these two subtools together. Merge down. And hit this button here to boolean it out from the main subtool. I'm going to merge. Let's turn on transparency. Merge down. And Dynamesh. And I'm going to merge this down to the logo, turn off player project, oops, and hit redynamesh that again. All right, and now we're at almost 7 million polys. That is a lot. So if you were to do that, if you were to get a model with 7 million polys, a dynamesh model, and try and create shell, that would take forever. It takes my computer about half an hour to um, shell out a 4 million poly model. Alright, now that we got that, let's just cut it in half and look, take a look inside. And let's go down to display properties and hit double. I'm just going to separate the outside from the inside there and hit auto groups just so it's easier to see the difference between the two. All right, now it's easier to see the two different surfaces. So now let's get our transpose line and we can measure the thickness here. So here we've got, it's about 1.1, a little over. And up here it's going to be a little thicker because all that detail. Here we got. 1.48 that's 1.1 here at the neck it's 1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 that's pretty consistent and 1.1 there too so we just got consistent shell out of this. Now let me show you let me snap this snap this to the canvas. Let me show you the um, the model you get. This is the this is a cutout. This is a model I did earlier of uh, the geometry create shell function. So you can see it's not quite as good. The neck is really choked up there. It's closed in a lot of these details and the thickness is not as accurate and this is the same thickness as uh, this other model that we just did this is at 1.1 millimeters so if I measure this this is 1.1 millimeters right here and uh, how you get that so I found this tool on Zebra Central, a guy I posted a while back. And it gives you an accurate thickness so you don't have to keep uh, using a trial and error to try and get the thickness that you want. So if you type in, say we use the uh, 900 re resolution that we just used, and we want a 0.11 thickness, which would be uh, the 1.1 millimeters, we would type in 50 in the thickness slider and that would give us the 0.11 shell that we're looking for and let's see this is 1.5 it's just not as consistent this is 1.3 A little farther. This is 1.1 here, but here at the neck, 
We got 1.7 and almost 2, 1.9 millimeters there. 1.6 right there. So it's just, it's all over the place. So this model I uploaded to Shapeways. Let me snap this to the canvas. And I've got this model here. I've uploaded these two models. This is a model I did earlier. And I've uploaded these two models to Shapeways to check the, um, the cubic centimeters to see how close they were. So let me show you that real quick. So here I've got, this is the model that we just did. Or one that I did earlier that's the same as the model that we just did. And it's almost two cubic centimeters here. And this is the model from the, uh, the create shell function. And it's 2.5. So that's 20% more than the model that I just showed you guys. That's a, that's a big difference for just uh, the shell function. And that's all because of the consistency in the uh, thickness of the walls. So now if we were to get this model on Shapeways and get it in a, you know, a pretty expensive material, let's say uh, raw silver, this model, the create shell function model, would be $80. And this model the one that I just showed you guys, it would be $69. That's an $11 difference just because of the, the way we created the shell thickness. So you can see how this, this would save you a lot of money in uh, 3D printing in general, especially when you use a service like Shapeways. All right, back to the model. Control N to get rid of that. We can decimate this. Let, let me decimate this down real quick. We're at 7 million polys. We want to get that down. There's pre process current. And we're going to decimate this down to 250k points. And so one more thing you can do to reduce your polygon count besides decimating. Let's just get rid of this, hit auto groups to separate the inside from the out, and select this part. You see we're at 85,000 points. We can go back down to zero measure, hit zero measure. And now the inside is at 15,000 points instead of 85. And we're at 180,000 polys instead of 250. All right. Now you're ready to print this thing. Thanks for watching.